As cases of coronavirus infections continue to rise in Nigeria, the Abbey State government has taken a step to protect her citizens from the pandemic. In the face of the lockdown, necessitated by the focused effort to prevent and contain the virus in the state, the governor, Dr. Okeze Bazu, approved the commencement of distribution of cash and food, as well as relief um, might, uh, items, as palliatives to vulnerable people. Aside these palliatives, how prepared really is the state? We still have in the studio legal practitioner Dele Faratimi. Thank you very much for staying with us. Um, we expect to connect via telephone with the Commissioner for Information and Strategy in Abia State, John Oki. Okay, I'm, I understand he is on the phone now. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Felicity. Okay, could you bring us up to speed on what is being done in your state, aside the palliatives that we have at the moment? Okay, thank you very much. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, well, we'll reconnect with you, but first let's take a look at um, a quick interview that the governor gave uh, during an inspection of one of these um, palliatives where they kept some of these palliatives and then we'll be right back and we'll reconnect with the commissioner to stay with us i just came to see uh the kind of uh items we have gathered in our food bank this is uh, one of our warehouses and uh, i can see that we have some rice some beans and uh, some bags of gare some tin tomato and um, beans and some tubers of yam. Um, our strategy is to distribute these items in such a way that we can cover at least 70 percent of uh, the less privileged Abians and their households at the first approximation. And the only way we can do this is to distribute these items through churches and mosques and then we do a mop up using president generals of town unions and uh, traditional rulers. So starting from tomorrow, the committee in charge of this distribution will effectively begin the uh, distribution of these items to various churches and mosques uh, in a segregated manner. I think we are going to take six of uh, the churches at a time, so that uh, within four days we would have done um, six by the same number, 24 different churches. The burden of taking it down to those who will need them and consume them will fall on the shoulders of the various churches because we know that they know uh, by name, all the ones that are challenged that we are targeting uh, by this program. I want to say that um, it is not possible for us to provide all the kind of things that our people will need, but these times are times for sacrifice. Um, whatever we provide, whatever we make available, we urge and pray that our people will take it and augment it whatever they have. Um, we can pretend that we have all that we need, but we think that what we have will go a long way uh, to alleviate the problems and the challenges that our people um, are going to experience within this period. We have locked down uh, our borders and our major cities for about uh, six days now. And uh, we are going to do a review tomorrow and know how to go from there. Technically speaking, from a medical perspective, the ideal thing is for us to sit at home for 14 days. So that within that period of 14 mm. days, if God willing, we are still free, we can all then engage the next gear, which is to ensure that uh, all of us compose really where our face marks even as we proceed to our various businesses and that will be after 14 days so within this period we are going to fumigate 
our markets, our institutions, and I think that program uh, will also commence within 24 hours from today. And um, we will also provide, along with these food items, distributing through churches, face masks and sanitizers to our people. So not only are we going to give these food supplies, we are also going to ensure that sanitizers as well as face masks go with it. Once again, we may not be able to provide face masks for everybody, even though it will be compulsory for all of us. We ask that we start distribution from the very, very vulnerable among us, the less privileged and those who cannot afford the face masks. The rest of us who can afford it, for us and for our families, our children and our wives, I will urge us to do uh, the needful by providing the face masks going forward. So, after the initial 14 days, the next phase will be that wearing of face masks in Abia will be a compulsory matter. All right, we've gotten an idea what is being done as regards food and uh, palliatives for those uh, vulnerable people. So we're going to try and focus on other areas. Um, I don't know if we have John on the line now. Yes, you do. All right, thank you very much. Quickly, um, I, I was speaking to some persons in Abia State and they told me that they are unclear um, the status of the isolation centers and medical personnel that will take care of it. Could you bring us up to speed quickly? What is being done? The number of uh, isolation centers you have and the preparedness of the medical team. Thank you. If you want my, let me start with the first question that you left out. We started by sensitizing our people, uh, especially with regards to the preventive measures that they can take to avoid this disease from coming to our states, which of course includes regular hand washing, wearing of face masks, maintaining social distance and the rest of it. We followed up by raiding three initial isolation centers one located at Amachara General Hospital, the other one at Abia State University Teaching Hospital, Aba. And indeed, we had a third one that uh, had been in existence for about uh, a couple of years, which belongs to the Federal Medical Center in Omoa here. With those isolation centers ready, we are currently constructing a fourth one at Aba, and we are working on a fifth one at Ohafia. Now, we have gone through the training and retraining of our medical personnel. They've done simulations. They are adequately briefed. We are lucky as a state to be one of those few states that have telehealth infrastructure long before this uh, disease came to Nigeria. All right, I, I have to interject because we are working with a very limited time. Quickly, the, we also understand there is a shutdown of the transportation uh, system. Can you confirm this? I can confirm that there is a total lockdown in the States. So how are these the medical moment, personnel going to move around, really? We provided vehicles for those whose um, services will be required at this time. And indeed, they are exempted from the restriction on transportation. Just like those who are selling food materials are free to sell in front of their homes, those who are transporting food materials are free to move them to where they are required. What we have is um, a humane lockdown in Abia State, mindful of the fact that all right. Um, I think we just uh, had a situation there. We'll try and reconnect uh, with the Commissioner of Information uh, in Abia State. As soon as that is done, uh, we will uh, talk with him. But let's come to Dele, uh, who is in the studio with us. Thank you for your patience, by the way. So, um, you've heard what is being done in Abia State. You saw yeah. the governor try to explain. Um, um, are you impressed really and um, what other areas do you think they might be focusing at this point i struggle as much as i can to try and be optimistic about all of these and i will do my best to actually stop sounding like such an alarmist 
You can only do the best you can within the available resources. Resources being not only money, really. There is the need for the human resource. I heard the commissioner talk about how excellent the health services in Abia State was before the pandemic came to town. I don't live in Abia State, but that's a new one. To hear of a state in Nigeria with such excellent medical conditions that is apparently prepared to cope with what is coming. I guess maybe the mayor of New York and the governor of New York has one or two things to learn from the Abia model because I really don't know how that came about. But having said that, if what we are left with are our pen knives in the face of a gunfight, I guess we can only try our best to go down in a blaze of glory. Our situation is far from ideal. But as we were discussing during the break, we can't just focus on the problems alone. We, of course, have to also look, look at... for a way forward. I mean, if we can find ways forward. And what I'll simply say to the average Nigerian, regardless of what state you're in, this is the time when we also have to take responsibility for ourselves. It is all well and good to say how useless our governments are, and I'll repeat that they are useless. But we also need to begin to ask ourselves some very serious questions. Is this really the time to be having congregations of any sort? Be that some carnival in the name of philanthropies? Or be that even religious services? Or I, really would, I would really love to reconnect with uh, Mr. John Oki so we get to know, because there is the situation with, in all of this, we talked about prisoners, we've talked about other vulnerable people. What about pensioners? Um, what is the plan for them aside? What, what kind of palliatives do you think that the government at this time can put up for pensioners? You know, the, the amazing thing about what you've been doing to me tonight <laughs> is that you ask me questions that you really, really... Okay, what to be done for pensioners? Let me ask you, I'm, what I'm, have they I'm done? Nice. I'm what nice. have they ever I'm done for them before now? When the situations were normal, when everything was fine, when there wasn't a pandemic, what did they ever do for the pensioners? What did they ever do for the pensioners? What did they ever do for the poor before now? Now we're talking palliatives? What kind of palliatives? Exactly how much is left after all the money they voted for their own care and comfort? So when you're talking about caring for the pensioners, what can they really do? Everything that used to be stolen has now been properly appropriated. Uh, wardrobe allowance, that allowance, this allowance. The purpose of government is to keep our rulers in style. It's not about also what can they really do for any pensioners? How much are they going to give the pensioners? Well, I, I think we should be um, given some sort of, we have a lot of problems. Like I told you uh, during the break, <laughs> uh, what we should be looking at, Solutions. at this moment is ways that we can reassure our people. And that's part of the reason we wanted to know what exactly is going on in Abia State and maybe other states. Like, I mean, we keep talking about Lagos. Lagos is setting the bar. What about other states? What exactly is the bar that Lagos is setting? Is a painted sepulcher. At the end of the day, the governor is doing a very good job of selling snake oil. That's what it is if you want to look. Let's cut it down to brass tacks. Exactly what can Lagos State government do for the indigent in Lagos State? How many people can they give these palliatives? For how long can those palliatives be given? When you say palliatives, what are these palliatives? Bread? The one derica of rice? Where is the water going to come from? Are those going to come as palliatives as well? How many taps are running in Lagos? Where are they going to get the water from? To be washing the hand that everybody is shouting that should be washed. They're going to buy the water. Where is the water? How is the water tank going to be moving around in this season where everything is on lockdown? Lagos is the bar. Let's talk about just how high the bar in Lagos State is. Walk around any part of Lagos, any neighborhood in Lagos at night. Come out and look around you. 
you will find that there is nothing called social distancing. We're just kidding ourselves. If you sit down in the plush comfort of your middle class existence and you think that that is what Lagos represents, that's not Lagos. You still slide back to it, but I would want you to proffer a way forward. Because at this time, the only we, way know, forward. We, we know that uh, governors, everybody's trying to do what they can, mm. irrespective of our history, irrespective of the things that we've done yeah. in the past. This is a time we need to pull together. So what is the way forward? The the first thing we need to do is to stop lying to ourselves. There is no way we can do anything meaningful in the face of the crisis we are facing if we continue as if we can do things the way we've been doing it. You that cannot continue having 36 states, 774 local government and local government chairmen who must be kept in style. The purpose of governance has become the preservation of our rulers in style. No matter how much they might, even if you mean well, exactly what can you do within the existing system? And we're still busy lying to ourselves as though the system is sustainable. It is no longer sustainable. Is either we are going to plan for a situation where we recognize the unsustainability of our systems and imagine our way forward, or we are going to find ourselves in situations where we would have to start reacting. There is a world of difference between reacting and responding. We lost the opportunity to plan a proper response when the presidency went to sleep weeks ago when they should have been planning. We're talking about releasing prisoners. That could have been done in one, with just a simple stroke. Why can, how come we don't have the data? How, why is it now they are compiling this? Please. We need to think of the way forward and stop pretending like we could go anywhere doing the things like it's business as usual. Thank you very much, Daily Faratimi, for thank your you. thoughts on the program tonight. Thank it's you. appreciated. Thank you very much. All right, and thank you for staying with us thus far. We must apologize for the, uh, you know, inability to get back with the Commissioner for Information in Abu State. Hopefully in subsequent uh, production, we'll have him on the phone, maybe live in the studio. All right, we'll go for our plus report, and when we return, I'll be giving my take. Don't go away. The Edo State government has shut down markets within the state and declared the use of face masks as compulsory. The deputy governor of the state, Philip Shaipu, said this is part of measures by the state government to curb the spread of coronavirus as the state records two deaths and 11 confirmed cases. All markets in Edo State had to be shut down effect from Tuesday 12 midnight to start the negation from Wednesday uh, 8 April this month. And that the markets are to be relocated to the inter public primary schools and secondary schools within the market facility. The struggle and the fight against coronavirus disease has been on the efforts towards sensitization and all the measures that all citizens should take in the aim of preventing the spread of this virus has been on. Our people have been told that the message we are getting is that people are not taking these messages According to the United Nations Office on Drug and Crimes, while controlling access might be easier in an environment like the prison, once the virus reaches there, however, as has happened in some countries, preventing its further spread is significantly harder. An even bigger challenge is the often overcrowded spaces in which we keep our inmates in Nigeria. Hence, exercise and social distancing in such a space is close to impossible. Should we have a situation there, it is not only detainees that are at risk. We need to know this. Those working in these prisons, which we now call correctional centers, who have committed no crime and have families, are at even higher risk of spreading it to their innocent loved ones. The government has a full plate, no doubt. But we are beyond making the right noises to get attention for nothing. It is imperative that training for health workers as part of efforts to manage this crisis should include prison health officials, if that is yet to be done. 
all efforts must be made to cut down on the bureaucracy and release those who are detained for minor offences as quickly as possible. One crisis is enough for now. That is my take. As always, we'd love to hear from you. Please find us on social media at Plus TV Africa. Remember to tag me to your comments and issues discussed here. You can find me on Twitter at Felicity underscore E. Until I see you again, please stay home. It's difficult, I know, but you will be safe. Bye for now.